This Rhinebeck recap is going to be down and dirty. In fact, there are only three things you really need to know about Rhinebeck. Number one, if you are in a restaurant in the village of Rhinebeck, any restaurant, I don't care which one it is, and creme brulee is on the menu, order it. You're welcome. Number two, if you find yourself violently ill while shopping at the festival grounds in Rhinebeck, go straight to building 36, go straight through it heading south, and off to your right is a lovely little tree where you can feel free to yak your guts up. But be careful, do this by the tree because you don't want to ruin the nice little spongy patch of grass right next to the tree that you can actually lay there away from the crowds without any fear of anyone looking at you like you're a weirdo. Number three, and the most important one to remember. Are you listening? Stay far, far away from the weird sheep people because now they urinate. Keep your eyes on the black sheep. Hello and welcome to the Spicy Homemaker Podcast. My name is Melissa and welcome new and returning viewers. I am so glad you guys chose to spend some time with me. And before we wrap up the quickest Rhinebeck recap in the world, let me just touch on a couple things and we're going to roll along because I know you guys have heard a lot of them and I'm not going to be adding a whole lot of new stuff to what's already been said. There's a lot of great Rhinebeck recaps out there and I am way late in talking about this and we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. I'll give you guys a little bit of real talk of what's going on in my life. So stand by. Um, by the way, this is like a potluck episode. There's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that kind of all mashed together, if you will. So let's just dive right in. All right, Rhinebeck down and dirty. I do mean it because you heard just about everything there is to know. Uh, let's start at the top. Needles up. Very positive shopping experience and lots of fun. In the untangled, not so positive, not too much fun. In fact, I felt like I was in, ep in an episode of Survivor. And that's like if the episode had all the contestants shoved into a shipping container with no way out. I actually heard a woman say, I don't love yarn this much. I seriously thought the apocalypse had come. Have you, did you ever think that anybody would utter those words over Rhinebeck weekend? But that is just to give you an idea of how insane and chaotic Indie Untangled was for at least the first two hours. Crazy. So, I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm not gonna go through every piece, like talk about every stash acquisition piece that I got at India, or not, at Rhinebeck Weekend overall. I'm just literally going to flash it up here, okay? So when I feel like I'm talking too much and maybe you wanna just see something, I haven't shown anything in a while, I'm just gonna, you can either ignore me, whoops, or yeah, or just look at the pretty yarn. You can listen and do both, whatever suits you. All right, and then there's only one last quick tidbit that I'm gonna add about Rhinebeck, and then that's it. And that is where I stayed. I stayed in a lovely little cottage with my friends Jody and Tracy from The Grocery Girls, and Nicole of Hugh Loco, and her lovely friend Christy, the very talented Nicole from Hugh Loco. And you know, the only thing I can really say about this, I mean, I could say a lot, I really could. It was a wonderful weekend with those ladies, as you can imagine. But I'll address one question I heard over and over from people. And that is, are Jody and Tracy really like that? Are they really that cool? Are they really that nice? Are they really down to earth? Answer is, yes. They are that amazing, that fun, and that wonderful. And I had so much fun, as you can imagine. It was a whirlwind weekend, but it was in the best way possible. We had a lovely time. 
And if you are ever planning on sending something to Jody and Tracy, you should know they just go crazy for Dove chocolate, the milk chocolate. Love it. Okay, they love it. And Parm Crisps. Those ladies really have a thing for those. It's kind of funny, but also kind of fun being the roommates because you get to eat those things. Yeah, we ate a lot of Dove chocolate. Just saying. And I had Parm Crisps for the first time in my life. That is it for my down and dirty Rhinebeck. Let's talk about what's going on in the Spicy Homemaker Ravelry group really quick. Okay, we have an Advent uh, swap going on, right? And it's already closed out. People already matched up. That's all done. Everyone should have been talking to their, their partners. I have gotten no emails saying that there are any issues. So yay, thank you everyone. But, um, not a but, you should have mailed your stuff out. November 1st was the day to mail out all your stuff. And if you hadn't mailed out your advent calendar, then you should have contacted your partner and let them know. And being your fearless leader in this advent cal and arranging it, I always believe in leading by example, which is why I am putting my advent calendar in the mail tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True statement. Look at the pretty yarn. Christmas sock cal. That's the other cal that's going on in the Ravelry group. Just knit Christmas socks. Post them in the chatter thread. That's it. And then we will talk about, uh, I draw a winner every month. No one claimed the prize for last month, so I am beefing up the prize for today, for this month. So, the prize is, uh, first of all, the winner is Dariona. Congratulations, Dariona. But let me show you what you won. Okay, Dariona, from last month, you still get to pick one of these two skeins. Artistic Lily, and this is called Tropical Vibe. And this is Lavender Mountain Yarns in the Wild Orchid colorway. Tell me which skein you want, you get one of these. You also get this lovely project bag in Notions pouch from the wonderful Darlene of Bags by Awesome Granny in her dysfunctional family bag. Love this. Have one myself. And, 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 and you get some stitch markers from the lovely Lily of Nordic Stitches. And yes, yes, those are Halloween stitch markers. Mm-hmm. I got these a while back. Look at the pretty yarn. Congratulations, Dariona. So happy you won. This cow will wrap up on December 15th. Give me a contact on Ravelry. Give me your address again. I know I have it, but just to make it easy, go ahead and give me your address, please, Dariona. And that is all for what is going on in the Spicy Homemaker Ravelry group. Now, <laughs> let's talk about what has come off my needles in the time that we've been away. I've been knitting a lot, a lot, a lot of socks because I've been dyeing yarn a lot. Not so much since I've been back for Rhinebeck. And again, we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. But let me start out with, you guys have seen these from me in the past. I always like knitting these up towards this time of year. And it is the Bluebird of Happiness. These are great gifts. This one's actually for Ruby because she sees me knitting all these little bluebirds of happiness. It's called Bluebird of Happiness, but clearly they don't have to be a bluebird. This one just happens to be a bluebird. Um, and she was to hang one from her window of where she sits in the car. So this one's hers with little sparkles. And I kind of want to talk about this because I don't know that I've ever really talked about these too much. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. I did add this little crochet chain here. I just crochet it into the top so it has something to hang and it matches the bird. Um, this one in my opinion is one of the best ones I've made because it's fingering weight held double. I think they ask for worsted or DK weight in the pattern. It doesn't really matter. You can make it a little bitty one with fingering weight if you wanted to. I just held it double because there was a lot of yarn and whatever. Um, but what I would tell you about these is do not overstuff them. Okay, it's um, this is how I do them. I, you knit the body first, right? And then it's finished, kind of. You kind of loop the thread through the tail here and you leave it open. And you'll see why in a minute. And then the head, you pick up the stitches and then knit the head. And then it tells you to stuff it afterwards. What I do is I knit the body, like it says, and then I stuff it with um, filling, right? But you don't want it too stuffed 
because it just, well for one, they do recommend, like see this tail? Like you can mold them, right? If this tail stuffed, he doesn't, he doesn't really mold well. Um, and then after the head's done, you close up the little beak here, but I usually just kind of stuff more in through, through the little booty tail here. But that's what one looks like not overstuffed. Now check this one out. Here's one that I have for myself. And see, I didn't, I don't think I made the crochet chain big enough. It's a little bitty one. But look at that little poor birdie. Let me put this one down. See, that booty's got a little, or this booty, <laughs> this birdie's got a little junk in its trunk. See that little hump there? She is quite stuffed and I can't do much with her tail. Um, if I push it back, she gets more lumpy right there. And you can see the yarn's kind of pulling away over here. There's little holes. Um, I could have sewn those up, but this is for me. Um, it does not bother me. Um, her head's really plump. It's just hard to mold when they're overstuffed. So see the difference? Let me move these out of the way. And then here's another one. This was made with hand spun. This one's not too bad. Um, they are when they're thick yarn. It's a little bit harder because this tail's not stuffed to mold. But um, it's a little plumper in the belly. Kind of like how I am right now this time of year. Mm-hmm. Been eating lots of chocolate, let me tell you. So anyways, Bluebird of Happiness. Love these little guys. And this one's for Ruby. I've, I don't know how many I've knit these years. Not a lot. Maybe my third one. But I really like it. Um, next up is socks. Okay, I'm going to show you a pair of socks that I knit using yarn that I dyed. And it's Christmas colorways. Are you ready? Okay, sock number one. This colorway is called I'm on Santa's Naughty List. As you can see, there's some black to represent coal in the stocking, and a little bit of a sassy pink, if you will, and some emerald green. It's a rounded toe that I used uh, for knitting it, and it's a plain vanilla sock with a German short row heel that I used from Mina, the knitting expat, one of her patterns. But this is called, I am on Santa's Naughty List. This one is called, I'm on Santa's Good List. Same colors, just one's black with big thick black stripes and one has big thick white stripes. Same rounded toes, vanilla sock. Um, but yes, yeah, so I knit these in, or I dyed these in 250 gram skeins and I love them. Now, I was thinking about, I do want to order, uh, open a shop soon. Hopefully this year is the plan. I would really like to do that, um, but that may not happen. We'll see. But anyways, what I was going to say is I actually like putting them together. I'm not a mismatched sock person, but in this case I kind of am because I like putting them together and calling it as a colorway together. Eh, it's a toss up this year, meaning I could be on the naughty list or I could be on the good list. Who knows? <laughs> so, yes, love dyeing the self-striping yarn. It takes a lot of time. Not so much the dyeing, but the prep. The prep before and the prep after. That's the biggest time suck. And one more finished object that did not come off my needles, but came off the lovely Lily from Nordic Stitches. You guys, if you have not seen Lily from Nordic Stitches, I highly recommend her. She is so sweet, so talented, so lovely, and she does some really cool, fun things. She often goes live too. Um, yeah, she's just, she's a lot of fun. You should see, and she's just such a sweet, genuine person. She sent me this as like, a, to cheer me up, right? Which, you guys, there's a lot of you who've sent me gifts to cheer me up. And I don't want you to think that I share certain things with you because I'm trying to get gifts or, you know, like extra attention from you. That's not my goal. It's just to be as transparent without going too far. <laughs> and, you know, let the chips fall where they may fall. Um, but I just want to say thank you for every person who's ever sent me a message of encouragement or a suggestion or just said, you know, hey, if you ever want to talk, let me know. Like, just certain things like that make a big, big difference um, when you're going through some tough times, as I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know. But Lily gifted me this. It's her phobia shawl. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. 
Look at these colors. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. This is her design in her Phobia shawl. Once again, Lily from Nordic Stitches. I, I, she has Nordic Stitches on Ravelry. And this is on my Instagram feed too with links, I believe. She gave me this. This was one of the shawls she knit when she was doing the pattern and it's in the pictures on um, Ravelry. And oh my goodness, it's just so, so beautiful. And she gave me a pattern and we already gifted one to the group, the Spicy Homemaker group on Ravelry because I didn't want to wait too long. Um, sometimes I'll do that. I don't wait until the next podcast. I'll just go ahead and put it up there. People are checking in the Ravelry group pop in. So sometimes you get lucky on some of those things. If people aren't really active in there, like sometimes there's only a few um, entries, your odds are really, really good. So I've already gifted that. Or I should say Lily gifted that to you guys. But just, oh, Lily, I love this. It's so soft and pretty and it's got Stellina and just this variegated yarn. I know she told me what it is. I have to look on her Ravelry page. It is on there. Like I said, on her, um, the front part of her, when you pull up the pattern, the page, this is on there. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lily. Thank you so much. And I believe that is all for finished objects. Let's just do a little yarn break, shall we? What do we have here? Let's talk about a couple of them. We're not going to talk about all of them. Um, let's talk about this one. Once Upon a Corgi, if you guys have not seen this, oh my gosh, no sleep till Rhinebeck. Look at this. Okay, I am so stinking excited about this yarn, you have no idea. Um, I met Gabby, I've, I've known Gabby for a little while now, we're friends and, and we talk on, you know, texting and stuff like that and we try to do some knit nights here and there, but she gifted me this at Rhinebeck. And this is her penny base. Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. It's so soft. I just, okay, let's just take this off. Let's just, oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it though. I lose everything nowadays, it seems like it. Let's take it off, because you just gotta see all this. So anyways, I brought it home and I was looking at this and I get home from Rhinebeck and I have all this knitting that I can finish up really fast. Lots of socks and everything. I had an uncontrollable urge. And I mean uncontrollable. Like. I think this is what drug addicts feel like. To cast on this yarn, oh, and I don't have the gray with it. I'll get that here in a minute and show you. Well, it's, anyways, I'll show you later. It's a darker gray, um, and I wanted to cast on a cardigan for Ruby. I had just the right cardigan that I picked out. It was tin can knits, and it, it just, it had to be that. It had to be that cardigan, this yarn. So I call her up, I'm like, I, I I think I need a knitting 911 call here. And I said, I think you might need to talk me down because I only had one skein of this and I need two. Not much of two, but I need two. Um, what would happen, I asked her, because I honestly have never done um, a variegated yarn like this with a sweater where I know you're supposed to alternate rows. But what really happens if you don't? And I've seen some sweaters, they look fine. And I just wanted to do it so bad that like, just tell me what to do. I will do whatever you say. She's like, I would wait. Cast on something else tonight, but just wait. I'll dye up another skein and send it to you, and then you can cast it on and alternate. That's what I would do. I was like, you're really asking a lot, but okay, I'll do it. And I did. I'm waiting for that second skein of yarn. No pressure, Gabby. I just get sweats at night, that's all. No pressure. Um, okay, a Hugh Loco Glitz sock, 75, 20, tw uh, five, 75 Superwash Merino, 20, 20 Nylon 5 Stellina. Hello. This is the Glitz sock in Finch colorway. I saw this on her Instagram feed and knew I had to have this, and it's in Stellina. So, yeah, pretty, hmm? Okay, let's move on in some works in progress. Okay, so what do you cast on when you are having like the sweats and you want to cast on a very particular project with very particular yarn? Mm. You try to come up with something that will satisfy the soul. And I did. I did. First, check out my Amy Beth Fat Squirrel Speaks bag that I got at Needles Up. Love this bag. 
my gosh, it's so pretty. Um, so I have been wanting to do um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, uh, her Longborn shawl. And I had two skeins of yarn that I knew would go in a shawl together. And this is Artistic Lily, and this is her vintage. She has like three or four vintage colorways, and it's like Vintage Forest Nights, Vintage Forest, Vintage Nights. Uh, one of these, I think I have the colorway in here. No, I don't. No, I don't. So I'm very sorry, but it's her vintage. If you go into her Instagram feed, you'll, you'll see them right away. Like she has a few colors, and they're all gorgeous. But anyways, these are her single base, or her singles. And I cast these on together. This is going to be my longboard. I have the whole body of the shawl, if you will. I don't know. Because um, this is the part at the top. And then you cast on, oh, well, I got it upside down. Like this. And then I'm going to do an applied border that's cables at the bottom here with the dark color. But look at that. Oh my goodness. It's so soft. It's so pretty. It's so nice to knit this was this is a really enjoyable knit it was perfect the yarn the colors everything was going beautifully um, flying right along I did find out it's very easy to follow uh, the pattern and it's very easy to read because you got these little like butterflies in here that I don't know if they're showing up with all this variegation right here but um, after you do a few rows you can just kind of see if you're off you, you'll be able to tell very easily well, I did like perfect until the end. Ah, not perfect, not perfect. I did some TV watching, and this is TV knitting for most people, I think. I think you could get away with that on a lot of them. But me, if there's rows to count, like I have to be very diligent about counting my rows. It's very easy for me to lose track of things. And you should be able to count these, but I just wasn't, I wasn't familiar um, yet. I know that sounds kind of strange too, because where the butterflies end up, the tops of them, it's kind of, it got me a little confused on where the row was starting and um, ending. So it was me that I just couldn't read it at first, which caused me to do less rows in between on some of them. So she gives you stitch counts and everything, but when I got to the bottom, I was short some stitches, which... I almost sent her a text and asked her, like, hey, here's where I'm at. Can I go ahead and do this border? Does, do these numbers matter that much? But I thought, you know what? I think it's an easy fix because the last row is just stockinette, right? Um, I am going to add in the stitches. I'm just going to add them in, you know. It's, it's the last row, and then I do a cabled border. So I don't even think you're going to be able to see it to get the right number of stitches before I do the applied border. Am I making any sense? I feel like this is just kind of... Blah, 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 blah. But anyways, here it is, Longborn Shawl by Kay Jones, highly recommend it, it's a beautiful pattern, um, very well written, Kay is lovely, she is awesome, and she's a wonderful knitter, and makes beautiful patterns that are just very, very easy to read, and just a joy to knit, so that's that. I have left just that one wonky row to get it right, and then the applied border. And I've heard the applied border, it's a cable. Um, I've heard that that's, that can take almost as long as the body. And the body took me less than a week. So I really don't care. But I mean, I don't know for sure. It's just what I've heard. Heard through the grapevine. All right. Next is nothing but socks. Before I get into my hand dyed socks, I've got a couple. Let me show you my next Christmas socks. So for our Christmas cow, I showed you the one pair that I've already done. It's not, not this podcast. I think it was the last podcast I showed. I love those socks so much. Um, and then I have the ones that I dyed. And then look, I got another one, guys. I cannot believe this. This, who am I? I'm knitting so many socks for me in a short amount of time. I think the dyeing, self-striping has really kind of lit a fire under my hiney. But this is another artistic lily. And it is her doesn't come from a store. Dazzle me sock is the base. Again, another Fat Squirrel Speaks bag. This I bought a couple years ago. It's a little cute little sock bag, Christmas bag. Because hello, it is Christmas time, isn't it? But I'm doing Hermione's Everyday Sock. And love it. I mean, I'm pretty much at the toe. I just put these down for quite a while. This is kind of the one I'm picking up as a vanilla sock. I don't I have one more vanilla sock on the needles. Actually, two. And um, that's it for socks. I'm wanting to cast on some more though. I've, I've really got some cast on, cast onitis kicking in bad. 
I do guys. I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good and be focused. Focused. I'm trying. All right. Now, let's talk about the very first colorway I dyed up that I'm very proud of. This is the one where I was like, yes, this is what I've been wanting to do. This is me. This is something I would put out into the world. This is, this is it. I'm almost done. Got a heel here and I'm ready for my toe. And I call this because of you guys. I put this on Instagram. If I get stuck on a name, I simply put this out into the world and you guys come up with the most amazing. It's hard to choose just one, but I picked Julie's and it is Autumn Crush. Perfect name, Julie. Thank you so, so much. Love this. And so all I need is a toe and I want another sock. Now, guess what I did? Everybody tells you this when you die and I thought I was doing a great job. Uh, write down your recipes for your dyes. So I think I know what I did. <laughs> I got every other color down how I did it, except for, I think I messed up the orange, the darker orange. That's gonna break my heart. I, I can recreate this, I know I can, but it's gonna take me more effort than it should because I had it. That's a little irritating. But anyways, Autumn Crush, Vanilla Sock, there's that one. It is living in my bag from the lovely Shara of the Shara Made podcast. Isn't that adorable? Oh, I love this bag. So pretty. I get compliments on the bag all the time, Shara. Okay, last but not least on hand dyed yarns. Again, I came up with this crazy fun colorway that I do love. Um, it, it's funny because I built this whole colorway around this blue. This blue was a happy accident that I mixed up and I love it. I actually think I'm just going to put some straight skeins of yarn and do a cardigan in this color. I really do because I love it that much. But anyways, I took that blue and built a colorway around it. And this is what I came up with. And again, no clue because there was no inspiration. Like sometimes I have an inspiration like that was definitely an autumnal color that I was really shooting for. Christmas colors. This one I built around the blue. So I didn't know what to name it. Put it out to you guys. And Danny, I believe it's Danny Lake, came up with the name for this one. Nutton Butt Pop. And Nutton is N-U-T-T-I-N. Like the nut. She said it reminds her. A lot of you guys were saying it reminds you of like a candy store, like the general candy store and lollipops and bubble gum. So she said it reminded her of like chocolate nut candy and bubble gum. And I thought, so nothing but pop. I was like, oh, that's, that's very clever. I like that. That's the name of this colorway. Thank you, Danny. So there's that. That is it for my works in progress. I will tell you, I will, my ultimate goal, like if I can really do this, I think I might do many shop updates. Like I might open a shop in a couple weeks. That's what I really would like to do. But they would be very small shop updates. So just stand by on that. You'll understand why I'm a little hesitant on some of this. I'm not hesitant. That's not the right word at all. Um, why I may just, might not have the time right now. Okay, let's just go through this bag I have here. I got some happy mail. So I'm going to show you guys a few things. I'll show you the happy mail that I got. I got a couple things that I'm going to call happy mail. Um, first, this has come in a while back. This is from my friend Janice. She was my Advent Swap Pop, uh, one of my Advent Swap partners last year, and she has um, a cat in the bag shop on Etsy. Her bags are so well made. These are like, um, see, oh gosh, I didn't even see that. Look at the inside. Oh, this is beautiful. I did open it, but I didn't realize like she has all these different. Um, it looks like it's in different language. The uh, Merry Christmas, and she has their pockets sewn into it. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you guys that well. Yeah, you can't see that. Look at the little Scotties on there. Oh, it's so cute, but it's like a, like quilted. It's like thick, squishy, um, padded. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, this is just beautiful. Janice, I love this so much. It's so pretty. Uh, I have lots of projects to put in this. I'm ready to go. Okay, the other Happy Meal I got, I signed up for a Christmas bag swap with Mini Castle Designs. And indigo chicken, I believe. Oh, I hope I got that right. If you want to see, 
what this went, go to her Instagram feed, Mini Castle Designs, Victoria. She made this for me. She is quite the sewist, and she does have an Etsy shop as well. But look how pretty that fabric is. And she just got some new custom Christmas fabrics. And I just saw that on her Instagram feed, and they're beautiful. So you may want to check that out. <sighs> Two Quince & Co. yarns. Look at that. Christmas, hello. Is that not pretty? And then um, the thing I want to show you, she's got some chocolates in here and some wool wash. I mean, she just, she spoiled me, Victoria. Thank you very much. And a pretty little card in here. Actually, I might eat that chocolate tonight because clearly I haven't had enough. If you knew the amount of chocolate. I've been eating chocolate like potato chips lately. It's just wrong. But anyways, what I want to show you, I'm going to take out the inside a little bit. I can't take it out, but it's a pouch. Z that's sewn into it. It's a notions pouch at the bottom. It's literally sewn into the bottom of it, in the middle of it. So it can separate your yarn and you have a notions pouch. Is that not cool? That is so cool, I think. So I'm very excited about this. I cannot wait to put this into use and put this into a rotation. But Mini Castle Designs, there's her tag right here. Um, and she is Victoria and that is her Instagram handle as well. Love it. Thank you, thank you. Also, if I've forgotten anything, I'm sure that I have forgotten numerous things. There's been so much that has happened since I've last podcast that I know, I just know that there's something I forgot or someone I probably should have thanked. And please know that is never by, like, I don't ever do that on purpose, okay? Give me a little bit of grace here, please, because I'm just a human. I make mistakes often. <laughs> but I am very, very grateful and thankful for everything that you guys do and support that you show me, so... Thank you. And I have another piece of happy mail to show you. This is from Jen of Playing With Needles. She does have a shop. And look at this, Charlie Brown Christmas bag. Oh my goodness. She's got a little zipper pull here that says, follow your heart. And then look at the inside. Oh, traditional Christmas fabric on the inside and oh, all these beautiful blues and fun, happy, Charlie Brown scenes. This is really sturdy too, by the way. Like, really sturdy. This will withstand my lifestyle. <laughs> Jen, thank you so much. Um, I am going to put a coupon code in the Spicy Homemaker Ravelry group. Um, we have a coupon code that is updated frequently, which she has given us a uh, discount. So look for that and check out her Etsy shop. So let me show you what Tracy gave me, Tracy and Jody, uh, when I was in Rhinebeck. Look at this bag, you guys. It has leather handles, it's so beautiful. Look at these bees on it. It's just a great bucket bag that you can literally, like I just see taking this everywhere in my house with my current project. Even if it's like putting my project bag in here, like I usually have like a couple pairs of socks I'm working on. I'd put two or three project bags in here even and just carry it around. But I have a feeling a sweater or a cardigan is gonna go in here really soon. So I love my bag. It's Nice canvas. She told me who it was and I don't, do I have it? Jenna Rose? That might be her. Might be her. I hope it's her. And, oh, speak of Dove Chocolate. Look at this, guys. Right here, got some. All right, so I bought, is it local yarn? Would you call it local yarn? Oh, it's in Massachusetts, Ipswich, Massachusetts. Romney Ridge Yarns and Wools. And this is, I believe, bulky. And this is, I bought this on Sunday, the day I was sick. Yes, I got really sick on Sunday at Rhinebeck. How fun is that? Um, literally, as I was walking through Building 36 to go back to the car and get to the, back to the cottage so I could sleep, I was like, you got to buy something, right? It's, sun, it's the last day of Rhinebeck. And I did want to buy some bulky weight yarn. And I bought it on my way out. Just picked these two and gave her money and left was not fun, but this is Orchid and this is Peacock. I'm thinking mittens all the way. Love these. And I got this beautiful little felted Christmas ornament. And is there anything else? A couple minis in here. And I got these, and people were talking about these too. They're little hexagon knitting needles and they're made of wood, but what was so cool, they had different woods because I was like, wood? I used to be into wood needles, now I'm not. I like really slick. But then they tell you the different types of wood and um, how slick they are. And I picked the one that had the most, 
that was the most slippery. And it is made out of maple. Indian Lake Artisans. Hexagonal needles. Very cool. And one more thing in this bag, and then I'll just start going over my dream knitting, okay? Because I did not want to just do a show and share straight through, because there's a lot. My little grocery girls pin. And one more. I've got a lot of buttons too, so please. I didn't, I'm just showing these because they're in this bucket bag. This is the Shawl Society from Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade Podcast and Designs. I had got to have dinner with Helen a couple times with the group of girls I was with and got to talk to her and she is so lovely. So lovely. I cannot say enough good things about her. So sweet, fun, and a little uh, spicy. <laughs> I just really enjoyed getting to know her better. But anyways, there's that. Okay, so one of the things I've noticed is that um, I've always, I love gray yarn, all shades of gray. I like to have multiple shades of gray yarn in my stash because you never know if you want more of a blue tone, a cool tone, a warm tone, a green tone. You know, gray is not just one shade, right? So why I don't collect more of it is beyond me. So that's something I tried to rectify in the last month or two. And I started with my friend Rachel from Diabolical Yarns because she has dyed up several different shades of gray and they're all gorgeous, like I want them all. But I tried to be good, like buy with a focus. I don't always do that. And I bought six skeins of her Timber Wolf. This is called Timber Wolf colorway. And I did a color, a picture on Instagram, and I don't think I did it justice. I didn't realize how crappy my lighting was until afterwards. And this is her Polworth Silk DK. 85% Polworth wool, 15% Tulsa, Tessa Silk, and it's DK, 100 grams, 290 yards. You guys, this is so soft. It is so beautiful, and it will be a cardigan. I got six skeins of this. She sells this for such. If you need affordable yarn, indie dyed, top quality, I highly recommend checking out Diabolical Yarns. And I bought a sweater's quantity. So this is going to be the Granite Cardigan by Sarah Cook. It is the perfect, I just, this just couldn't be any cardigan. Like I had, I knew when I would see the pattern, I would know, you know, I, this yarn drove the pattern. Like I knew I wanted a cardigan, but not just any cardigan. And I found it and I'm very happy and I wouldn't be surprised if I cast that on the next two days. So there's that. Okay, so my next project I want to cast on as well is the Half Moon Oracle Shawl by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast in the wonderful dyer behind Wool and Vine Yards. So what started that is I have noticed that car, uh, that uh, shawl, when she did the full pie shawl, it was beautiful. I thought, man, I should probably knit that. And when she came out with the Half Moon Oracle, I thought, oh, how can you not knit that? So it, this started everything. I saw this before Rhinebeck and asked Kristen if she was bringing this to Rhinebeck because I wanted to buy some. And I was not able to get to her booth because of the Indian Tangled Madness. But this is Dragon Tears and her Blitz base. And oh my goodness. Look at, look at that. Oh, I am in love with this colorway. She just has a way of doing that, doesn't she? Like... When she puts out a colorway that you fall in love with, it's not like you love it. It's like you love it. You need it. <laughs> this did that to me. <laughs> so I got this. Um, this is a Leading Man Fiber Arts. Um, 50 gram. This is not a mini. Half skein, I'll say. Um, and this is in their colorway Eternal Kiss. I got this at Stitches Midwest. I was thinking, because it's brioche, right? I put this on Instagram too and it was asking for opinions. So this is a Stellina based cream colored, right? So I could do these three or another gray skein I bought at, I did buy this at Indie Untangled at the end of the night. This is from Little Fox in her Vixen and it's called, or it's Superwash Merino 20% Silk in her Whisker colorway. She had beautiful grays as well. So really what it will come down to is what my mood is when I skein these up because this is just a softer shawl, plain and simple, right? 
this is more of a contrasty shawl. And I gotta tell you, um, so I was really, really wanting to do these two together. I thought, or these three. But I'm kinda leaning towards this now because I really do like high contrast in my brioche. And I think that really gives this to it. But I don't know. And then I may end up dyeing up my own yarn for it to do maybe a slightly lighter one. Not much lighter. And these are two Stellina based. So maybe I'll get another one that's Stellina based. Because the shawl pattern says you need 50 grams of each color. That's not much. That's what, a skein and a half? So stand by. I don't know what I'm going to do yet on that. It will be a surprise to me as well as you when I pick because it will, it will, it will be based on my mood at that time. Okay, that is it for dream knitting. That is it for everything except for some real talk at the end that I do not have planned at all. I don't know how to go about this. How do you go about any of this stuff? So we're just gonna do it, okay? We're just gonna do it and hope for the best. But before we do that, let's talk about this too. This is by Miss Babs. It's called her Babette and Estrella Lita, I think is the name of it. Of the Estrella, oh, okay. So Estrella Lita. Estrella Lita is the base. It's a fingering yarn. 92% Superwash Merino, 8% Lurex. That's why it's really high sparkle. And yeah, that's it. And it's called Good Morning Glory. Um, I saw this. I love it. And I just think that's got to be something for Ruby. Even if it's socks, hat, I don't know, but I love it. So I had to show you that one. Um, more is coming here. Okay, we're gonna show you yarn as I talk about what's been going on with me. So, you guys have known, I've alluded to it. You know, like I said, where do you, how much do you share? How much do you not share? I don't know. All I know is when something wrong happens to a person, I don't necessarily need their details, but you're kind of wondering like, what happened, right? Like, can you give me the cliff note version? So I'm gonna to try to do that. So basically what is going on is that our family is having a huge transition right now. We're going through a divorce. Look at the pretty yarn. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm giggling right now, but please don't think that I'm thinking of this as a lighthearted subject, it's just, I mean, do you want me to be a sobbing mess on here? No, not right now. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, we're doing that and we have the house on, or we're getting the house prepared to put on the market and we want to do that quickly. So uh, if you do that in two weeks time, there's not like a ton to do, but there's a lot of straightening up, some painting, um, figuring out, you know, just how to get that stuff done quickly and also look for a new house, which I've been doing. Um, and then, oh, this is from Chili Knits, Connie, my friend. She, this was a gift for my friend Meryl. So sweet. She had Connie give this to me. Um, also another happy gift. So, <laughs> anyways, yes. Uh, we've been talking about visitation, child custody, and those are really hard topics to discuss and to plan out. And um, everything really hits home in those moments. I go between two extremes when stuff like this happens, where I just want to go full speed, get things done, I'm in high power mode, to uh, I want to completely shut down and do nothing. So... Anyways, yeah, it's been fun. Not really. Uh, but I am at that point now where I just want to move forward. We've been kind of in this cycle for a long time. Long time. And it is really taking a toll on everybody. So I just feel like if we can just get out and move on, not that like, oh, I don't even know what to say really. So let's just look at some more pretty yarn. <laughs> so this is from my friend Lauren that we met last year at Rhinebeck. We had to meet up again this year and we've kind of connected. She's wonderful. She has the Color Wheel Yarn Shop on Etsy and uh, we did a yarn trade and Ruby was looking at her shop with me and Ruby instantly said, I want that. So 
this is what I got. Isn't that pretty? Oh, just how vibrant and new and fresh and oh, I just love this. New beginnings, shall we? <laughs> oh, anyways. Um, what else do I want to say? Another little fox in the gray, darker gray. See how yeah, that's like a more bluish purple gray? All grays are not the same. Um, I don't know what else to say about this, really. I will say that, you know, this wasn't a decision that was arrived at easily. And it's not for usual things. I mean, you know, I'm not going to go into that kind of stuff, but... Um, I do believe in marriage, and I do believe that sometimes we give up a little too easily and too quickly, and I can assure you that was not the case with this. <laughs> not that you care, but anyways. Um, so yeah, just trying to get a lot of necessary things done, and then yeah, I want to open this yarn shop. And I want to um, rebrand the podcast and stuff. And so there are happy parts in my day, in my life. And then, you know, my children who, um, they need a little uh, extra TLC right now, you know. And uh, I, I will say this. If you are ever going through something like I am, and... Um, things I've learned through this is that people don't always understand and that's okay. You know, you don't really want to wish this on anybody, but it's like when you experience something really terrible, um, and people make them short flip comments that really don't help. Um, that will happen. Uh, some people won't have the patience for it. I mean, it is hard. It's a hard road for you to walk. So you will lose friends throughout this process. It just will happen. It really will, unfortunately. But you will also find some very surprising forms of support that you never could see before. Like you just, people that, people can really surprise you. And I think some people just don't have the mental capacity to deal with it. So it's not necessarily that some people are leaving you, but they just can't deal with all that. Um, so maybe they're just a friend. You know, they're not a close friend, they're just a friend. And um, that's okay. Maybe you'll reconnect on the other side. But some of them you'll find out they were never your friends to begin with. And you know what? That's a good thing to know. It kind of hurts, but so be it. Like I said, then there's those other people who surprise you. And, you know, it's, it's just tough. It's just tough. You don't have to explain yourself because I'll guarantee you, people come out of the woodworks that you never expected that have similar stories and they will share them with you. And you feel like you're part of a club that you really wouldn't want anyone to be a part of. You know, like, I'm sorry that you're a part of this club, but I'm also glad that you understand. So I have really appreciated people who have reached out and I've been able to really openly talk to a few. That's been really nice because as I'm getting towards the end here, like I haven't talked about a lot of things and um, now I just feel like to get through that healing phase, you kind of need to talk about it. You definitely do at some point. And um, so yeah, lots of new beginnings here and as I joked not too long ago, I said I feel like I'm being forced into a midlife crisis, you know? getting divorced. I might be getting another new job. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Um, I said, now all I need to do is trade the minivan in and for a Corvette, right? <laughs> but anyways, you guys know, I don't really want to like talk about it again in future ones, but I feel like I need to say something and not be so vague that people kind of know, but you're not really saying, you know, you're playing that game. So whatever. I'm sure I babbled a lot about this. I have no idea how I will edit it, but that is that. Um, any more yarn in here? Yes. Oh, goodness. Chili Knits by Connie. Connie, 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 Connie. Connie is so lovely. I love Connie. And lots of minis that... Oh, and a Sucra Sucra stitch marker. Little gingerbread man. So that is that. You saw all the Rhinebeck stash. That is it, people. 
my friends, that is it. And again, it now looks like a yarn store barfed in here. <laughs> All right, well, I am going to wrap it up here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time with me. And stay tuned for what will happen in the future. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, wherever you may be. And until next time, bye.